guys, it's Kayla, and I think you know what time it is. That's right, it's time for Drunk on His Love. Now this story is actually pretty long. There are two chapters and then of course the ending. So this may be broken into two videos. I'm not sure yet, depends how quick the chapters go. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoy this story and let's get started with Drunk on His Love chapter one. Uh, Unable to make any headway on my work, I let out a sigh as I sit staring at my computer. There's a reason for my lack of progress. It's, hey you, where's Michelle? Startled, the staff member I address quickly answers back. Oh wait, this is Timo's perspective. Okay. <laughs> Startled, the staff member I address quickly addresses back. Michelle, she's probably checking on the Kaleida Leopards, don't you think? Yeah, I know that. Then why did you ask? She gives me a strange look before heading away. I let out another big sigh, then glance at Kayla's schedule. <sighs> check on the cubs, check on the injured adult, and the rest of the day will be spent observing the leopards. <laughs> no matter how many times I look at her schedule, it doesn't change. I give up and toss it on my desk. Ah, we live in the same apartment, work in the same lab. Why is it so hard to get a moment with her? Aw, he wants to see us. Is that too much to ask? I gaze up at the ceiling and let out yet another sigh. <sighs> What's wrong? You sound like the world's coming to an end or something. Huh? <laughs> Just then, Kayla's face pops into view, staring down at me. Startled, I abruptly fall over backwards in my chair. <laughs> Poor Timo. Timo, are you alright? A part of me begins to relax as she squats down next to me to see if I'm okay. Without thinking, I reach out and wrap my arms around her. Hey, what are you doing? It's your fault. What is? I can't focus on my work when you're not around. I'm constantly exhausted and I have no ambition. All of it's your fault. I quietly confess while burying my face against her shoulder. Kayla chuckles and returns my embrace. She then pats me on the back as if comforting an anxious animal. Oh boy, looks like we have yet another wounded cub on our hands. Michelle better be getting paid overtime. I hear someone joke and the rest of the group laughs. The sound immediately brings me to my senses. Oh no, what's gotten into me? I feel bad hugging her and quickly pry myself away. I sit back in my chair and pause to take a deep breath. Uh, sorry. That's okay. You look really tired. Are you feeling alright? You should worry about yourself. You look equally tired, to be honest. I've been a little lonely lately since I haven't seen you. My emotions come spilling out without hesitation. I assume it just goes to show how much I miss her presence. And, having admitted them, I proceed to grow incredibly embarrassed. Don't concern yourself with me. You better return to work. I turn away from her and attempt to look busy. However, when I do, she leans closer, demanding my attention. Alright, but will you come with me? Why? You're not the only one feeling lonely. She then smiles and places her hand on top of mine. The leopard cubs appear quite attached to Kayla. They immediately gather around her the moment she shows up. <laughs> hey, stop that! Just like cats, they attempt to play with her and she responds to them like any mother would. <laughs> I find myself smiling right along with her. When she sees that, she lets out a sigh of relief. <sighs> What's that sigh for? It's nice to finally see you smile. Oh? You should have seen the frown you were wearing. It was horrible. It looked like you are trying to solve the riddle of the Sphinx or something. Kayla touches her finger to my brow. Now that she mentions it, I can feel some of the tension. I'm violating my contract, aren't I? Really? Contract? I wonder what he means by that. Yeah, our employment comes with the expectation we will give priority to our research. Only I'm choosing to neglect mine. Try as I might, I can't ignore it. Talk about pathetic. The desire is there, but I can't bring myself to act on it. You really do take things seriously, don't you? I love that about you, Timo. Her delicate hand wraps itself around mine. The simple act saves me from my own despair. My intention has always been to be there for Kayla, and yet today it seems like I'm the only one receiving all the support. This unfamiliar new awareness leaves me feeling embarrassed yet happy. Thanks, Kayla. I slip my hand from hers and start to place it on her shoulder. Just then, ah! One of the leopard cubs charges between us before I can react and begins licking my face. Taking that as their cue, the rest of the cubs press towards me and knock me down and begin licking me all over. Hey, stop that! Don't tug on that! Ah, you're gonna rip my clothing! One by one, I manage to fight off the playful clubs. Kayla begins laughing uncontrollably at the sight. <laughs> stop laughing and give me a hand! Don't be upset! They're just trying to console you! Oh? Is that right? I ask one of the nearby cubs and he responds by licking my face again. The animals I'm supposed to be caring for are consoling me. I've hit a new low. Don't take it like that. They're sympathizing with you, which means they've accepted you. Isn't that great? Sure, if it's true. When she sees me grimace, Kayla laughs again in amusement. <laughs> I hardly see the humor in it, still. I can imagine worse situations, just barely. I reach out for the leopard cub and wrap my arms around his soft furry body. We spend a while longer with the cubs. Eventually, I find myself petting one as he grows tired and lies down at my feet. 
It looks like you've made a new friend. I love animals. Just being around them makes me relax, don't you think? Definitely. But that's still not enough. I need to spend time alone with Kayla. If I remember correctly, we both have the day off tomorrow. In which case, Kayla. Say, Timo. We both speak up at once and turn to look at one another. Sorry, go ahead. No, you first. After conceding to one another, Kayla takes the initiative. Since we both have the day off tomorrow, why don't we go do something tonight? Like go out to dinner? Her suggestion catches me by surprise. Uh, what's wrong? Don't tell me you've got plans. No, it's not that. Kayla, would you ever consider allowing me to test you? Test me? For what? I think maybe you've got ESP or something. I was just about to ask you the same thing. I give Kayla an incredulous look and she bursts out laughing. <laughs> not a chance. If anyone has ESP, it's you. Me? Why do you say that? You always seem to know exactly what I want and how to make me happy. Not only do you have ESP, you're also my hero and the researcher that I respect the most. Ah, uh, that's quite an honor. So I assume this means you're okay going to dinner tonight? Absolutely. Remember, I'm the one who suggested it first. Great. This is perfect inspiration to finish up our work. That's true. I seal our dinner agreement with a kiss and head back to the lab. Careful, you'll trip and fall if you don't pay more attention. Fine. What are you doing back there? Why don't you walk beside me? And have people mistakenly assume I'm your drinking buddy? No thanks. You're awful. Besides, you're just as drunk as I am. How do you figure that? Because you are. The fact that you're talking and smiling so much proves it. What on? A faint sigh escapes my lips. I made a point of not drinking tonight because I have a paper I want to read later. Perhaps it was good that I didn't have any drinks tonight. Listen, just try and keep your excitement to a minimum. I am, I am. She waves off my concern without bothering to turn around. Good grief. I suppose if I weren't smitten with her, I'd find her less adorable and more of a bother. As I'm shrugging off my uncharacteristic reaction to Kayla's behavior, ah! I hear a faint scream in the distance and immediately realize she's nowhere to be seen. Kayla? I yell out and there's no reply. Complete silence fills the space occupied by her voice a moment ago. The rhythm of my heart starts to grow unsteady. Calm down, what's going on? Think, I have to find Kayla. Kayla, where are you? Answer me! A sense of foreboding comes over me, in an effort to shake it off, I yell out her name while racing over to where I last saw her. Okay, and now we're on chapter two. I think I will put this all in one video, by the way, guys. I wonder where we went missing to. I hear a faint cry in the darkness and go racing towards it, hoping to find Kayla. Kayla, where are you? There's still no answer when I call out her name. This is where I last saw her. Where could she have gone? Oh no. A nearby stairway gives me a bad premonition. I calm my nerves and slowly peek over the edge. Ow. Kayla's at the bottom of the steps, sitting with her backside on the ground. Kayla! Timo, I fell. She admits embarrassingly. I hurry towards her side. Are you okay? You didn't injure yourself, did you? No, I didn't really fall. It was more like I stumbled and ended up on my butt. <sighs> well, I'm glad you're alright. She gives me a questioning look when I let out a sigh of relief. You're not mad? You tripped and fell. Why would I be mad? On the contrary. I place my arms around her and hold her ear up against my chest. Do you hear that? Your heart's beating really fast and erratic. Like other animals, our pulse grow erratic when we're anxious. Were you afraid I got hurt or something? You bet I was. I heard your scream, but didn't see any sign of you. I thought my heart would stop when I called out and you didn't answer. Not seeing you these last couple of days has left me feeling incredibly anxious. Please try not to make it any worse. I'm sorry. My uncharacteristic display of emotion rapidly convinces Kayla and she quietly apologizes. Just so long as you understand. Well, shall we continue home? Okay. Ah! I reach out a hand to help her up. When she takes it and starts to stand, a momentary look of pain comes over her expression. A closer look reveals her knee is bleeding. She did injure herself after all. I look over hand, turn away from her, and crouch down. What? Hop on. You mean you're going to carry me on your back? Exactly. Now hurry up. Kayla replies, Hmm, I guess I'll say, I've already caused you enough trouble. I've already caused you enough trouble. It'll be even more if you trip again. Besides, it's my privilege to be troubled by you. Not much of a privilege. That's not true. The more you trouble me, the more I feel entitled to take back the favor. For example, in bed. Oh, oh my gosh, this got so steamy so fast. Kayla finally gives in and hesitantly climbs onto my back. This is so embarrassing. Her voice is so soft I can barely hear her. For a grown-up adult, I would imagine it is, especially after having tripped on the stairs and skinned your knee. I find the thought amusing. Imagining Kayla's look of embarrassment as she clings onto my back brings a smile to my lips. <laughs> Timo, are you laughing? No. <laughs> yes, you are! Stop that! It's not funny! <laughs> it's your fault. 
Then put me down this instant! Nope, who knows when I'll get this chance again. Then again, knowing you, I'll probably have plenty of opportunities. You will not! Is that right? Then stop complaining and let me carry you. Her warmth pressing against my back feels pleasant as I walk throughout the city streets. I feel great. It's been a while since I've had a good laugh. Since tomorrow's our day off, let's have another drink when we get back. I'd hate to waste this feeling. Oh? Kayla sounds surprised by my suggestion. I have to admit it's unusual for me to be in such high spirits. Well, what do you think? Sure. If we're in your room, we can drink all we want without bothering anybody. She enthusiastically replies and gives me a squeeze. What the heck are you two doing? Olivia, is that Joy's last name? Olivia gives us a puzzled look when she spots me returning home with Kayla on my back. Well, Kayla... Nothing, honest. Don't worry one bit. Kayla cuts me off before I can give Olivia an explanation. Oh, you're absolutely sure about that? You heard her. I wouldn't concern yourself. My stifled laugh apparently tells Olivia all she needs to know. She avoids asking further questions. Okay, have a good night. Oh, and Timo, let me give you one piece of advice. What's that? As long as you carry her around, you should hold her in your arms like a prince with a princess. She explains with a wink then heads off. That makes sense. Huh? Timo, what are you doing? I set Kayla down for a moment then pick her up in my arms as Olivia described. She stares up at me with a bewildered look. The moment her eyes meet, her cheeks start to turn red. Let me down! My back was starting to get tired after carrying you all that distance. Then let me walk on my own. Forget it. I'll carry you, my princess. Huh? When I cheerfully add that last part, she blushes even deeper. Like a prince with his princess, I continue carrying the embarrassed Kayla all the way to her front door. I'll get things ready. Come join me when you're done changing. You can manage that on your own, right? Or would you like a hand? I can manage! If I'm not mistaken, you've been teasing me way more than usual today. That's because... That's because you've been way more adorable than usual. I knew it. You are behaving strangely. She angrily turns away, then heads into her room. She's got a valid point about my behavior. Still, I'm not complaining. I did the best with what was available. Don't expect much. Please take it easy with the wine. It sounds like you had quite a bit with dinner already. Josh and Ryan were kind enough to prepare wine and snacks for me. Although Ryan warns me not to expect much, his hors d'oeuvres could easily be served in a restaurant, and the wine Josh has chosen is one of Kayla's favorites. I deeply appreciate the fact that, although my request was last minute, they readily responded without a single complaint. Thanks, you two. This helps me immensely. You're welcome. Besides, your happiness is our happiness. Ryan is absolutely right. Well, I hope you enjoy yourselves. Grateful for their consideration, I settle and wait for Kayla. Before long, she shows up wearing a fresh change of clothes. A smile spreads across her lips when she sees the beautifully set table. Your preparations look fantastic! I thought so too. Although, to be honest, Ryan prepared the snacks for me and Josh picked out this wine. They must really like you. I think it's you that they appreciate. I shrug off her remark and motion her to her seat, then immediately raise my glass. Cheers! Cheers! Wow, I love this wine! Mm hmm, it's very smooth. Careful, don't drink too much. Remember, you've already had quite a lot. You would say that right as I sit down to all this wonderful food and wine. You're mean. Not to mention discourteous. Think of the trouble Ryan and Josh went to. Uh, I suppose you think I'm drunk. Listen, I just call it how I see it. Well, I'm not, for the most part. Only someone who's drunk would be that insistent. Besides, who trips and falls like that when they're sober? Kayla ignores my disbelief and cheerfully keeps talking. Her excitement is adorable to watch, and without thinking, I reach out to touch her cheek. Mm. If I kissed her, I wouldn't be able to stop myself, would I? A part of me resists the temptation to touch her further when just then... Timo! I realize she's leaning towards me. A moment later, I feel a soft sensation against my lips. Ah, what was that for? You were thinking of kissing me, right? I had to beat you to the punch. To my pleasant surprise, she smiles victoriously. See, I told you you have ESP. Maybe. All I know is I can practically see what you're thinking. Alright then. Can you tell me what I want to do right now? Good question. She places her forehead against mine, then stares into my eyes as if she's speaking to my mind. You want me to keep kissing you? And after that... I immediately start to grow excited as those charming lips whisper sweetly to me. Good grief, does she have any clue how hard it is to resist her? Ignoring my distress, she begins kissing me repeatedly, savoring each moment of contact. Was I right, or would you rather I stop? Her tongue slides across her lips. At this point, I suppose there's no sense in resisting any longer. I take hold of her arm and lay her down. It seems to me you're the one begging to be kissed, among other things. Perhaps. Let's go back to my room. As I start to get up, Kayla grabs hold of my arm. <clears throat> what? Let's stay here. I nearly gasp at this unexpected suggestion. Are you serious? Yeah, I can't wait any longer. Oh my gosh. Ah! 
This is a public place. Her eyes are filled with desire. There's not a man in this world that could resist such an inviting look from the woman they love. When did you start having such dirty thoughts? Who knows? Possibly when I fell in love with you. It just shows how much I adore you and long for your affection. What about you? Me, I... I'm no different. I want you so badly, it's driving me out of my mind. I'm at wit's end. After whispering in her ear, I plan a kiss on those lips. And it looks like we're at the happy ending. Ah, it sure is bright. Is it morning already? Speaking of which, where am I? And what happened last night? I wake up to the lovely aroma of coffee and bright sunlight streaming in the window. Only their invigorating effect is wasting on my foul mood. Ah, oh, my head's pounding and I'm so exhausted I can barely move. That's not me. Someone's lying on top of me. Timo! Oh, that's right! I... Last night's memories come flooding back at the sight of him pleasantly sleeping. Oh yeah, I got drunk and tripped, and Timo gave me a piggyback ride home, then he carried me like a princess to my door and we drank some more then. My next memory is the touch of his lips all over my body. The sensation remains clear in my mind. What was I thinking? I'm so embarrassed, I reflexively cover my face with my hands. Just then I hear a snicker. <laughs> I gather you're remembering last night. Timo, you're awake? Only just now. Oh, how do you feel? Not bad. That's good. In that case, could you get off me? <laughs> Why? He gets a playful look in his eyes as he gazes at me from point blank. Because I'm having a hard enough time forgetting his lips from last night. Not to mention, I hate to say it, but you're heavy and my head's pounding from my hangover. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize. Just remember, it was you who attacked me last night. When he grins at me, I feel myself begin to blush more. This is too embarrassing. I have to get out from under him. I can barely restrain myself as I wait for Timo to get off. Only he shows no sign of moving. Um, Timo. What? I believe I asked you to get off of me. Yeah, you did. What are you waiting for? I changed my mind. What? He starts to lift himself up, then immediately settles on top of me again. His body no longer feels quite as heavy. However, now I'm trapped under both of his arms. I'm thinking I'll observe you for a little longer. Observe me? What for? Future reference. His answer leaves me at a loss for words. Future reference? What's that supposed to mean? He's just teasing me, isn't he? I suppose it's my fault. I should avoid drinking the alcohol for a while. <laughs> I should avoid drinking the alcohol, yes. As regret starts to sink in, I suddenly notice Timo is leaning towards me. Mm. Timo? Ah, oh, he's gonna kiss me. I close my eyes in anticipation. Just then, I hear someone descending the stairs from above. Someone's coming! Huh? Before their footsteps can approach any closer, Timo springs off of me. I lie there on the couch, startled and alone, wishing I could curl up and disappear. Good morning, Timo. You're up early. It's Joy, and she doesn't appear to notice me. It's only a matter of time, though. Perhaps I can convince her I'm sleeping. Without realizing it, I nervously begin clutching one of the cushions. Timo casually watches my reaction while carrying on his conversation with Joy as if nothing is wrong. Good morning, Olivia. Thanks for your suggestion last night. Sure, I almost forgot. So, did Kayla survive her evening? Yeah, she's fine. Aren't you, Kayla? Joy shifts her gaze towards me as Timo points in my direction. I hurriedly sit upright and attempt an awkward smile. Hi, Joy. Great morning, isn't it? Yes, it is. But what are you? Joy stares auspiciously at me. Behind her, Timo holds up a mirror in my direction. Ha! Huh? In it, I can see my hair is disheveled and my shirt is half unbuttoned and I'm a complete wreck. How embarrassing. I can't believe I'm letting Joy see me like this. I put my head in my hands. The headache I feel coming on has nothing to do with my hangover. Joy begins to nod knowingly. Ah, uh, I get it. Get what? You've got hickeys all over your neck. I do? You're kidding. That's so embarrassing. Timo bursts out laughing when I quickly attempt to cover my neck with my hands. <laughs> huh? Hey, wait a minute. Timo wouldn't leave a hickey in such an obvious location. You were kidding, weren't you? Oh, Joy's a sly one. Your reaction was too entertaining for me to resist. She's horrible. Faced with Joy's complete lack of restraint, all I can do is sigh. <sighs> Listen, I think it's great you two are getting along so well. Just try not to flaunt it, okay? She gives me an encouraging pat on the shoulder and winks at Timo before returning up the stairs. What reason did she have for showing up here? Who knows? I'm too embarrassed to think at the moment. I'm sitting here with my cheeks burning up. Meanwhile, Timo's casually wearing a smile. How can you stand there acting as if nothing just happened? That's not what I'm doing. I'm contemplating. Contemplating what? Yes, I'm contemplating dragging you back to my room no matter how much of a fuss you might raise. Don't be silly. You're one to talk. He lazily replies, then leans over and kisses me. 
he's right. If anyone comes out of this looking silly, it's me. Come to think of it, when have I ever managed to turn the tables on him? The man's impossible to outmaneuver. I expect that's what attracts me to him. What's wrong? Nothing. Never mind. I don't suppose you're feeling hungry? A little. Want to have Josh fix us something? What will you do after that? I suppose if you're hungover, you'll spend the day resting in your room. On our day off? Not a chance. Why don't we head out somewhere? Okay, but if we do, we're staying away from alcohol. He declares with a smile, then leans over and kisses me to confirm we have an agreement. Okay, guys, and that's it. That's the end of Drunk on His Love. I am so surprised by that. I thought it was going to be him that got drunk. But it was us. Still a very cute story. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And we are going to keep going through Timo's main story, of course. We're almost done. Just confessed our love to him. Can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!